lab exercise we're going to be working on has to do with Graham's Law. Graham's Law is a law that allows us to compare the velocities of gases that are at the same temperature based on the masses of those gases. As long as two gases are at the same temperature, they possess the exact same average amount of kinetic energy. Now the formula for kinetic energy is kinetic energy is equal to one-half mv squared. Now, once again, as long as the gases are at the same temperature, then their kinetic energies are going to be equal to one another. So if we have a gas, say gas A, and also gas B, what we can say when they're at the same temperature is that the kinetic energy, or one-half MAVA squared, is equal to the kinetic energy of gas B, which would be one-half MBVB squared. Now this would be, be the beginnings of Graham's Law. We're going to rearrange this to get the mass on one side, the velocity on the other side, and that that's how Graham's Law is typically expressed. Because we have a one-half on both sides, the one-halves will drop out, and we're left with MAVA squared is equal to MB VB squared. Let's place the masses on both sides and the velocities on both sides. So we have MA divided by MB is equal to VB squared divided by VB, excuse me, VA squared. Now let's get rid of the square sign by taking the square root of both sides. So we're going to have the square root of the mass of gas A divided by the mass of gas B is equal to the velocity of gas B divided by the velocity of gas A. This essentially gives us a ratio of the velocity of gas B to the velocity of gas A when the gases are at the same temperature. Now the lab exercise itself, the intent of the exercise is us, for us to try to demonstrate and prove that Graham's law actually works and is valid. Here's what you'll do for the lab exercise. You're going to pick up a glass tube. Working as a team with your lab partner, or in this case probably partners, what you need is someone that's a timer and a couple people to handle some chemicals. Into one end of the tube, with the tweezers, we're going to insert a cotton wad that's been dipped in hydrochloric acid. At the same time that we do that, we're also going to dip, or excuse me, insert a cotton wad to the opposite end of the tube that's been dipped in ammonia. Gaseous HCl is going to begin to effuse or migrate through the glass tube. At the same time, gaseous NH3 begins to effuse through, or excuse me, diffuse through the glass tube. When the two come in contact, we have a reaction that takes place. Hydrochloric acid is an acid. Ammonia is a base. When the two run into each other, they form a salt, which is ammonium chloride. The salt of ammonium chloride actually makes, will appear as a smoke ring because it's a white gaseous material. So we're going to see a smoke ring form in the tube. When the smoke ring forms, what we're going to do is stop our stopwatches. We started the stopwatches when we inserted the cotton wads. Now when we stop the stopwatch at the site of the smoke ring, we have data that will give us a distance to the smoke ring from the cotton wad, and also a distance to the smoke ring from the cotton wad for the ammonia, and we have a time value. With the combination of distance and time, we can take the distance, divide by the time, and that'll give us the velocity. If we know the velocity of the ammonia and the velocity of the HCl, we can compare them to see if Graham's law is actually working. Now one of the things that we need to do here is we're going to set up and find the known ratio of HCl and ammonia, and we're going to have our experimental ratio to compare to that. So the known ratio, what we can do is we can find that, for example, the square root of the mass of HCl over the mass of ammonia 
will give us a ratio of the velocity of ammonia to the velocity of HCl according to Graham's law. We can find the mass of HCl using the periodic table and it turns out from the periodic table the mass of HCl is 36.5 grams. The mass of ammonia is 17 grams. If we take the square root of this, this will give us a ratio of the velocity of NH3 to the velocity of HCl. That will be our known value of the ratio of these gases. Using our experimental data, we would then find our ratio of the ammonia to the HCl and compare it to this to see how well Graham's law works for us. Now, a second mathematical equation that will be of use for us in this particular unit and section is we can directly figure the velocity of a molecule just based on its mass and the temperature that it has. This is not an actual part of the lab exercise, but it's also a basis of Graham's law. And this is the equation that you would need to be familiar with. Its velocity is equal to 3RT over the molar mass of an object taken to the one-half power. In this circumstance, we have to remember R is going to be 8.31 times 10 to the third joules per Kelvin mole for this calculation. And temperature also needs to be in Kelvin. The value that we have for capital M, that's the molar mass of a gas molecule. This would be another equation that is the basis or root of Graham's law.